Hey guys, just gonna head down to a place called Simpson. I bought a 03 Dodge Ram 1500 4.7, doesn't start. So we're gonna see if we can get this thing running. Wish me luck. Well, there she is. I just bought this the other day. Doesn't run, see if we can get this old girl running. It's a 4.7, it's an 03 model year, but the reason I bought it was the body is really clean. I mean, the body is really a nice shape. This is all kind of roachy. No rot, no rot on the doors. It's not even rotting out here yet over the wheel well like they always do. The SLT model, it's a little dinged up. I mean, it's got dents and boo-boos, but I don't care because it's not rotted out. Looks like right here we're gonna have a little problem. We can fix that pretty easy. All right, so we're gonna see what happens with this. I'm gonna get the hood up and throw a battery in it and see what the codes say. Well, evidently I got a battery going because I got a dome light. So I got my code reader here. Ooh, it's already trying to get me in there, but it's just showing hot. So now I gotta turn the key on. Let's see what happens. Let's see what the codes say. The codes found zero. Okay, so that means it might have been reset, but it's showing no codes. Let's see if it cranks. Huh. Sound like I wanted to go there for a second. Sounds a little funky. All right, so I'm gonna flip the key on. I didn't hear the uh, fuel pump. I'm gonna try that again. All right, so I heard the fuel pump run. Next step, I'm gonna see if there's fuel pressure. It's down there in that little, little Zerk fit, not Zerk, that little Schrader valve down there. So it's on the rail. So if I push that button, I should see some fuel squirt. Yep. Not much pressure though. That didn't seem very lively. Hmm. Great, I'll have a weak pump and that's why it won't start. Who knows? So, that you know what that means? I'm gonna try a little ether, see if it fires on ether. And if it does, then I know that might be the issue. Premium starting fluid. Wow, it really cranks weird. I don't like the way it cranks at all. Try a little more ether. I don't like that repeated clunk either. Hmm. I think I bought a turd. Okay, so all that cranking got me to kick a code. It's a P0032, heater control circuit high. I don't know what that is. Okay guys, this is what happens when something sits around too long. <laughs> In this area anyway. Cat's gone. Somebody stole the cat. The catalytic converter, they're, they're quite valuable and drug addicts and other losers and thieves steal them. So that's something I just found. I knew it sounded funny cranking. And I could tell right away that I could smell gas and stuff like that. That's because it's cranking, blowing gas right through. If the cat was there, it would be sending it out the back of the tailpipe. But now the cat's gone, so that's another couple hundred bucks I gotta spend just to get this thing running. Well, I haven't gotten it running yet, so now it's time to Get out the old power probe. This box right here, it's where all the fuses and relays are, controls the engine, controls all that. Now I switched this guy, which is the wiper high and low, which this guy, which is the ASD. ASD, I think it's, uh, I don't know, automatic shutdown, ASD shuts down if uh, you hit something or whatever. If that relay doesn't work, you don't start. So I switched them, I'm gonna give it a try, and see what happens. All right, wanted to see if I'd read it. I'd read, tried reading another code. Uh, all I got was the same 032, and that's probably because the oxygen sensor is missing because they stole the cat. So I imagine that's got something to do with that. Anyway, I'm not getting any code. I just checked that, and I'm gonna go through and check all the fuses, which is easy to do with this meter. This meter is awesome. 
So what it'll do, I got it plugged in, a, you can plug it in a cigarette lighter, or you got clamps, you can hook it up to the uh, battery if you like. It's got a long cord. Oh. So I'm going to go through and read all these and see if, make sure all of them are good. I already visually inspected all these. These all seem to be good. But what I'll do too is uh, I'll check, uh, look at the legend on the relay box cover and see if any of these are something that may cause it to not run. Otherwise, I probably just throw a couple parts at it. I'm probably just going to change out the, uh, the crank position sensor and the cam position sensor. And after that, I'm kind of stymied. You know, then we're probably getting into where maybe a jump time or something stupid. Because it does crank funny. But it doesn't crank like it's real low compression. I don't know. It cranks kind of hard. I don't know. Uh, keep investigating. Okay, I really <laughs> didn't find any smoking guns there. So... I've checked it back and forth. I'm going to run into town, which isn't far, and I'm going to buy a fuel pressure gauge and see what that tells me. All right, went to the auto zone in the big city. There it is out the back of my truck. I actually saw a guy who, uh, met a guy who uh, knows Connor. So that's pretty neat. It's nice when you see familiar people. Back off to the job. Okay, guys, what I got now is I got a fuel pressure gauge hooked up. I just don't think it's getting enough fuel pressure. And I jumped... The relay, 30 and 87. If you hit 85, you're going to cook your PCM, so you got to be super careful about where you put it. It tells you where they are on the bottom of the relay. You can see it. Let's see what the fuel pressure does when I, when I get the pump running. Well, that is not the problem. But we're getting up almost to 50 PSI. There, I just jumped it right back up. It's almost 50 pounds per square inch. So, And I hot-wired it. So that's this is just definitely not the problem. I'm getting fuel pressure. And the regulator's not bypassing. None of that. So I'm going to start changing parts. And I got a couple parts at, uh, at the AutoZone. I got the crankshaft position sensor. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change the uh, cam sensor. But I'm only going to change one at a time. See what happens. Well, there was nothing left to do, so I just buried her. The old truck's dead. Ah, not really. It's still over here. <laughs> that was funny, though. Ah, a little bit of rust there. That's the worst rust on the whole truck right there. Anyway, so I got a good body, but guess what? It is now burping antifreeze out the exhaust pipe. Where they cut the cat away, that's antifreeze right there on my finger. You know how I know? It's deliciously sweet. So, motor's toast. Well, I'm gonna head back home. There's no point in this. I'm gonna return the stuff I got at AutoZone, except for the fuel gauge. I already tried it. Wish the heck I didn't. And then I'm gonna head back up to the house and do something productive, because this is not going anywhere right now. I'll have to bring the trailer down and haul it home. Well, it was a mission, but it's a failed one. But you can't make something run if you just got water antifreeze coming out of the exhaust system. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you on the next one.